There's been a lot of talk about pillars of wrestling promotions over the years. The term comes from 1990s All Japan and the original Four Pillars of Heaven, who are still absolute legends of the business and their techniques continue to be studied by new generations. The Four Pillars name has been reused more recently in AEW, less to indicate the top of the heap and more to indicate who they're building the future of the company around. But there was another version of this in early Dragon Gate. In the 2000s, the top of the card was still dominated by the Toriumon Originals. But as the company prepared to build up new stars in the 2010s, they named the original Big Six. The Toriumon 2000 projects Masato Yoshino and Naruki Doi, and Dragon Gate Trueborns Shingo Takagi, BB Hulk, Yamato, and Akira Tozawa. Out of those, Yamato is the only one who is still regularly near Dragon Gate's main event scene and is still considered the veteran ace. Tozawa moved on to WWE in 2016, Takagi moved to New Japan in 2018, Yoshino retired in 2021 and later became Glates Commissioner, and Doi went freelance in 2022. BB Hulk is still a Dragon Gate wrestler, but his injuries have piled up over the years to the point where he's mostly in tag matches now. So at Dragon Gate's Dead or Alive 2023 when they named a new Big Six, also known as the Rewa New Generation Leaders, many felt it was long overdue. These are Madoka Kikura, Yuki Yoshioka, Shun Skywalker, Ben Kei, Kota Minura, and Strong Machine J. When I made my Masquerade series, I didn't really mention Madoka Kikura. That's because less than a year into his career and six months into his heel run with R.E.D. as Hip Hop Kikura, he severely injured his shoulder just two minutes into his first title shot against Shun Skywalker at Dead or Alive 2021. He was out for a full year, returning at Dead or Alive 2022, and rose up through the ranks over the next year until he earned another title shot at Shun's second title run at Dead or Alive 2023 and finished the story. <laughs> Kikita's victory speech is what named the new Big Six, and with him being the most recent debut of that group and the youngest champion in Dragon Gate history, it became very clear that the company is fully investing in its younger talents, with the veterans gradually stepping aside. 2022 seemed like a test run for Yuki Yoshioka as the new company ace, soundly winning the King of Gate tournament and defeating both Kai and Kota Minora back to back in two nights. He then started a crusade to defeat every other former champion in the company, but hit a wall at Shun Skywalker. Now, I've said plenty on this channel about Shun, but this new era came at the end of his second title reign, despite only being 26 years old. So he's already the guy who they can reliably put the belt back on whenever they need to build someone else up. Ben K debuted in the same class as Shun and Yoshioka, and he's already had the belt. But he might have missed the boat on the new Big Six if it weren't for his character reinvention as the Chiki Chiki Sensei, and finding a charisma that most people didn't even know he had. Kota Minura previously had a couple title shots, even main eventing one of two nights at Kobe World 2022. But his development has been somewhat hampered by having to adapt to several alignment and character changes in Gold Class. It seems like he's finally found something that works for him, with the element of exchanging roses with the fans. Strong Machine J's true age is unknown, but presumably mid-twenties, and he probably has some kind of stamp from when he was assembled in the factory. But J has only just broken into main event status, losing to Shun in his first ever title shot. Shun has vocalized that J doesn't belong in this group, so he'll be fighting to prove his legitimacy. As for who they missed in the Big Six, the obvious one is KZ. But his debut came shortly after the last of the original Big Six and at the start of the next program, so he's arguably the unnamed seventh of that group. Big Boss Shimizu was the first to vocalize his omission, so he'll be fighting to be taken seriously among his peers. Another major omission is Eita, who has done everything there is to do in Dragon Gate, but he announced that he was going freelance shortly before these new pillars were named, so he might have been in that group had they announced it maybe a year earlier. A few others who could have made it into an earlier bunch have moved on. So that leaves the contemporaries of the current ones. Hyo, Dragon Daya, SB Kanto, and Jackie Funky Kame. I believe all four of them will still be very prominent in the future, as well as non-native roster members Jason Lee and Diamante. But guys like Hyo, Daya, Jackie, and Minorita will likely carry the Brave Gate division for a long time, and SB Kanto has been on an excursion as of the Big Six announcement. The rest of the Dragon Gate future rookies are likely too new to really determine where they'll be yet, because most either haven't joined units yet or they're also on excursion. Mochizuki Jr. will have very big shoes to fill, Ishin and Minorita have strong roles within their current units, and the 2022 class has started winning matches faster than most other rookies. But despite these omissions, it doesn't mean they'll be cast out of the main event scene or will never win the Dream Gate, it just means the ones who are named are the young talents who will be able to elevate the rest and the company itself. And for my money, Dragon Gate is in really good hands for many years to come, regardless of who's in and who's out. If anything, it might even make the outliers fight harder to reach the top. And it already seems like that's the point.